Good evening, everyone. How are you guys today? I hope you are doing well. Welcome to Monday Night Muse, an impromptu. I am your host, Sam Graver, and I hope everyone is doing wonderfully. So, of course, I'm going to check my audio. Go ahead and say in the comments if audio is fine, if visual is fine, and we'll just go ahead and take it away. We are talking about the boot camp mentality or the mindset for artists today. And I'll tell you a little bit about my experience. So let me go ahead and check YouTube real fast. All right, audio sounds fine on my end. Does it sound good, guys, on your end? There might be a little delay in the chat. Oh, never, never mind. We've got, we've got uh, Prof saying sounds great, looks great, awesome, and everyone else. So let's go ahead and welcome the chat and and talk about some some things, or really just one thing, one thing tonight. And of course, the length of the stream really depends on you and your input on what I have to say. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, actually, Big Al was first, and and we we can prove it because Dr. Y, who is first right now, says Big Al presents. Will you give me a ten? I'm short on cash at the moment because uh, Big Al was saying drop and give you twenty for the boot camp. You know, I had that nice nice picture. You know, I don't know about you guys, but obstacle courses, you know, for boot camp looks really they they look so fun, but I know it's pretty strenuous and, and hard, a lot of hard work. So uh, probably would not be as fun to actually go through the obstacle course, but they look, they look so fun. Uh, I remember seeing one near a camp, like it was a military camp area in Arkansas. And it's like, yeah, that, that looks really fun. But I'm sure being in the military is very, very arduous. So let's go ahead and welcome the chat. Uh, Dr. Y, of course, in the house with his, somewhat dad joke and professor geek eagerly eagerly awaiting my beautiful muse thank you i'm here and speaking of here matthew flynn is also here welcome matthew i hope you are doing well and horizon talker is in the house i hope you and everything else uh, as far as your art is concerned and job is going well and owen lister see we got the artists in here that's good that's good and we've got zetopia as well and Melissa Harris as well. And, and then Dr. Y and Wolfton. Um, <laughs> a sound engraver stream is never impromptu. It is well planned and everyone is, oh, hey there, sound engraver. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. There's always a little bit of a, a risk with impromptu. I, I didn't, I, I guess I could have had time to, to write down some notes, but I actually rather uh, I would have rather, you know, spent my time on the creative task, like composing music and getting other stuff done. So, yeah, it's not really much to talk about, but just just some thoughts on my experience. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that is everyone. So let's go ahead and talk about the boot camp mindset or the boot camp mentality. So as most of you, oh, hello. Let me just welcome Big Al. Uh, standing at attention in spirit, right? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you, Big Al. I, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, speaking of which, we, uh, Prof and I watched the, the Winter Sol Soldier last night. That was my first time watching The Winter Soldier. And I thought that was a great movie. I thought that was really fun. And Falcon is an awesome character. He did not need to be changed at all. He's, he's great as he is. He is pretty cool for a character. So anyway, that was really a fun film. So let's go ahead and go back into the uh, uh, the boot camp mentality or mindset. I should say mindset. Uh, so as you guys know, you know, boot camp, it's pretty much uh, a, a, a quite a common phrase. We've heard it for, you know, a number of decades, of course, and or at least the idea, the concept where where you do so much work and so much effort, this this extraneous amount of effort in a rather short duration. Uh, obviously, we when we think of boot camp, we think of people in the army going, um, having been recruited, uh, recruited to a specific location, and and going through all that that physical exertion and and all that you know strenuous effort. 
and we can think of things like the Navy SEALs um, with, with their kind, their training. But I think Navy SEALs actually, that kind of intense training is is a lot longer. So not not so much. I would say just the average soldier or or person in in the army and the Marines that that they go through a very very intense bit of activity in, in a short duration. Now I'm I'm. I was a military kid, but to be honest, I, I know nothing about the military. <laughs> so I had both my parents were in the army, but uh, that that's that's long past. So anyway, but I, I would say that the boot camp mentality can uh, stretch to the professionals and also to the artists. So before I get into, you know, benefits or things to consider, you know, what to expect in in this uh, this boot camp mindset. Let's go ahead and just tell you what I've been going through, or at least, at least what I experienced in the last two, two or so weeks, about, about a week and a half ago. So if you guys didn't catch my last stream, I did some live composing. Um, I have, hopefully, we'll see, I don't know, I may have the opportunity of meeting the composer, David Wise, next Sunday, or this coming Sunday, I should say this Sunday. Um, for masterclass, uh, the the selection of composers, uh, it's it's not been selected. That that bit of information will be brought to my attention this this coming Friday, where six composers will have the opportunity to be uh, on on a stream on a live stream, and and have our music be critiqued by David Wise, the composer for all the great games, or not all the great games, but lot, a huge selection of games from uh, Super Nintendo. Uh, my particular favorite is the Donkey Kong Country series, uh, games one and two. He may have done three, but I thought that was Eveline Fisher. I, I, I honestly don't know really at, at the moment. Um, but he's definitely the composer of Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest, which is really pretty much my favorite childhood game. I love the whole trilogy, but that in terms of music, I would say actually the first Donkey Kong Country game that, so the, the first and second really cemented, really impacted me as a composer. I was impacted as a kid, even even years before I knew I was gonna be a composer. I was I always dabbled in music, but I wanted to be a world-class pianist when I was a kid. But David Wise with his, his soundtracks really, uh, really stretched my imagination what music could be. Um, and now I'm, you know, in my thirties producing electronic music on a daily basis. In fact, my, my four track album hopefully will come to you within two to four weeks. We'll see. We'll see how the progress is. So David Wise has been an icon uh, of a, of a musical figure, a music professional for probably 25 years. So it, it's, it's a real honor if, if I'm selected you know, one of six people selected to meet him in person, um, have him take a look or listen to my music, uh, ha have him, you know, receive his criticism, uh, his constructive criticism. I, I, I think that would be pretty swell. So what I had to do before that, um, he and Kev Bayless, his artistic partner, who, who is um, a character designer, um, he and Kev, Kev Bayless are working on, I believe, a virtual comic coming up called Salamandos. And, and Salamandos is um, is pretty much, it, it's, it's a, a, I would say an army of salamanders, kind of like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, except I think they're, he was saying that now it's expanded to 12 or 13 different characters, salamander characters. And dos means two, which means, uh, which uh, represents um, David Wise and Kev Bayless as, as a partnership. In fact, it was brought to my attention earlier on a live stream last weekend that his his new company with with Kev Bayless is called DK. I think it's DK Creations. I think that's what it's called. I'm like, that's great. It's Donkey Kong. I don't know how they got the DK, uh, you know, for their name. We're, we're gonna get to boot camp just just in a minute. I always get a little excited when I talk about this. Um, but DK Creations, I think, is what it's called. And it's not actually Donkey Kong. And DK is not for Donkey Kong, even though it's in yellow letters. So you kind of think of it. Um, but DK actually means David and Kev. I was like, that's awesome. <laughs> so that's a sidebar. Um, 
but anyway, so they're, they, they've been working on a project and I was involved with this um, video game music platform called the VGM Academy or Video Game Music Academy. And, um, you know, I signed up to be a member just, you know, really for this opportunity, but we'll see um, what happens afterward as well. It's, it's, it's quite great. Um, but Daniel, who is in charge of the, the Video Game Music Academy, uh, does a seven day challenge every month. And so for seven days straight, you, you have to compose at least two to four bars of music. And hey, Daniel Craig, nice to see you. Um, so you, every day you have to compose at least two to four bars of music. Well, I'm actually beyond that point. I, I, I compose every day so I can produce a lot of music. I'm not saying polished. I'm not saying anything mixed well, mind you, but I can, I can actually compose a lot of music every day. So I took on the seven day challenge to, to hopefully meet David Wise. And because I had um, been so frequent, you know, I compose every day. I thought, you know, okay, I average about two to four hours of composing every day, w whether that's actually composing the music or editing the music. And it's really, it's really both. I try to do, you know, you know, composing new things all the time. Um, so I'm like, okay, two to four hours a day. That, that's my average before and after teaching, or maybe even between teaching if, if I'm teaching online at home. And I thought, well, okay, I, I really want to produce some, some good quality sketches and, 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 and something between 30 seconds and even two minutes. Uh, really 30 to 90 seconds and then my final day was actually two and a half minutes and it was fine because it was, a, it was the final, it was the finale, it was the big boss fight, it was the big baddie showdown if you haven't listened to it already. I have, I have all the music uh, uh, posted on my channel. Uh, it's called music uh, video game music special. So I, I thought, okay, well, I'll, I'll compose every day because I can, uh, but I really want to double my efforts. And so I was averaging six to nine hours a day of composing every day. Now I take Sundays off. It, I really do take Sundays off music besides listening to music for, for enjoyment. Um, and that's just my Sabbath. It's been my Sabbath. And so I was working all the way through. And I don't really condone it, at least for me as, as a Christian. It, Christians have different opinions on this. But I, I really do encourage one day of rest. So if you're a musical professional or a music professional or an artist professional, art professional, uh, you know, give yourself one day uh, of, of breathing room and work on something else or enjoy, read watch a movie, whatever the case is. Uh, but that the seven day stretch was, was Friday of a couple weeks ago to, to the Friday, uh, well, to the Thursday night of, of last week. So I was pulling eight to nine hour days on composing. And that's, that's, that's including my teaching schedule. And I, I have to say, it was good. It was, it was a good run, but I, I think by day four, I was, I was really feeling the burn. And so you actually can feel a creative burn. And it was a good experience for me. Now, I'll say before kind of, you know, uh, thinking and, and musing on the benefits and what to expect about uh, boot camp mentality, I will say that uh, because of this challenge, because of the seven day challenge, I had an artistic breakthrough. I, I actually didn't know, to be honest, I didn't know I could compose game music uh, or gaming music, at least on this level, this quickly. So it was a really good, it was really enlightening for me. It was really uh, inspiring, like, wow, I can really produce a lot of music. I, I think I composed probably about seven, mu seven minutes of gaming music in seven days. Now, obviously, it's not mixed or mastered or polished. Obviously, some of those tracks do have to be expanded uh, just for structural purposes. Um, the, 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 the narrative, the flow, the instrumentation, all of that, you know, the, even the melodic lines, all of that, of course, is subject to change because those were rough drafts anyway. But the fact that I could produce that much music in a week was very, very encouraging. And I could not get to that uh, I could not get to that um, revelation. 
without having done so much, without doubling my efforts. So yeah, I felt the burn. I was so tired by, by the, by the, by the submission, I, I was not even just composing, but I was, I was editing, I was recording the, the compositions and I was rendering it in my video software and I was posting it on YouTube. So it was, it was averaging about nine hours a day. I, day two was short, so not, not as much, but it was averaging nine hours a day, including teaching. And I, I, I had, I was, I was composing like while I was, you know, getting hungry. Um, I was kind of pushing sleep a little bit, like by an hour. It wasn't not totally healthy. And, and we'll talk about that. Um, well, I, I would say it, it's healthy if it's in a, in a shorter time frame, like, like seven days, not like a year or a month or whatever. Yeah, so I think I, I think I lost my train of thought, but uh, yeah, I was I was I was just really really sweating, and by by the time day seven I, I had finished publishing, I had finished composing, recording, and publishing on YouTube, I I felt like I finished a film because of the level of work that I put myself through and that level of focus, you know, hyper focus and concentration I put myself through. It was really strenuous. It really I mean, I, I really did push myself, and and there was a reason for pushing myself. It was the it was it was the opportunity to to meet David Wise. If if there wasn't like an end result, unless I had a deadline for an actual professional project, I, I probably wouldn't have pushed myself as as much. So that was a very very good experience for me, and I'm, and I'm very grateful for the opportunity, and I I see the benefits as as. A professional artist and, and see how much how much work you can produce in a short amount of time how much uh how much more prolific you are as an artist and that's that's what having like a, a stretch of time like like seven days straight can can really help you with and 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 because of this also i'll be able to tackle my album much faster because i'm like oh wow i, I I didn't know I was capable to go this fast. It was really fun. It was it was really enlightening. So let's go ahead and um, before we get back into the chat, I actually do want to bring up this point. I just saw this on the the comments. Yes, I thought that was the the reason too. Here I thought Salamanders was Salamander and Commando. I know. I, I thought that that was that was too. Maybe it is. Maybe maybe. Maybe David Wise and, and Kev Bayless will, uh, will will realize. Oh yeah, that's what it means. Because it's I think it's like protagonists, uh, you know, fighting bad guys in in space or something. So yeah, I think it is a little bit of a. I'm gonna say military troop. I don't know. I'm gonna check out the comic uh, when they when they do release it. Um, virtual comic, unless you guys know, I'm not really sure what that is. It's not. I don't think it's a digital comment. A comic. I think it's a video comic or maybe a still shot of, of moving art with David Wise's music. Maybe there's, maybe, maybe it's a story that's sung. Maybe it's a story that's read, or maybe it's, it's, it's words you read as you're watching the video. So I'm not quite sure what they mean by virtual comic, but it sounds fun. It sounds fun. So actually um, the seven day challenge was um, I, I was, I had to compose based on a prompt, a, a daily prompt given by David Wise. Uh, the first was title screen. The second was character selection. Because uh, it's, it's based on a game, even though I think this will be a virtual comic. Uh, so title screen, day one was title screen. Day two was character selection. Day three was fight scene. Day four was the dark queen, which I totally missed the mark on that one. I, I didn't compose the right mood for that, for that character. Uh, day five was Tunnel Chase. That was really fun. Day six was Tall Tower. And day seven was Big Baddie, or as I like to call it, the showdown. So it was really fun. It was really, and it, it, it with that kind of limitation, like, oh, I have to compose for this specific theme. That also pushed me because I'm actually an intuitive composer. I, I, I compose a moment and then I kind of work around that moment or that idea. Uh, or sometimes I'll just drop out, you know, drop in a, a rhythmic kit, compose bass line, and then the harmony and melody are, um, are, 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 are composed based on what is, you know, what is that bass line? What is that uh, rhythmic kit? So, um, 
Yeah, real quick. I think here here's where here's where I would say while while it's on the top of my head, um, you know, talking about the boot camp mindset or or putting yourself through that that window, that time, that very intensive uh, uh, activity for for that that given length. I would not recommend boot camp, you know, your you know, your arts boot camp. Or I would not recommend going through that if you don't already frequently produce art or practice art. It doesn't have to be producing art in, in that you have to output something for the public to see. But if you're not practicing your art already on a frequent basis, on a daily basis, I wouldn't I wouldn't go through that strain. So if someone, maybe someone, and, and I think some composers on, on this platform, I think they did say that they hadn't composed in a long time. And it challenged them. If if they if they produce small sketches, they can do it. But I'm talking about like real intense. You got to double your efforts, kind of idea. If you already don't practice your craft on a daily basis, I wouldn't go through that level of intensity. You already have to go through some uh, uh, some 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 endurance. You know, like a, a runner who runs daily. Well, yes, they can take on a marathon. There's no way I could start running a marathon. You know, someone say, hey, you, we're doing a marathon this Saturday. You want to come? I'm like, I'll, I'll come and watch. Maybe I'll take a walk. But I, I wouldn't be ready to do a marathon. But if I ran every day and then I started training myself for that, then yeah, then I could do a marathon. So it's the same way. It's, um, I always forget what it's called. It's it, uh, NaNoWriMo or uh, November where you write for the whole length of the month of no November. And people are like, oh, yeah, write 1,000 words a day, write, write 2,000 words a day. Well, if you don't write frequently, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now, if you write daily and then you're like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to try to write 2,500 words to 3,000 words every day, uh, even though I only write maybe 100 to 500 words a day, then then that's a good way of, of pushing yourself. Now, I will, I will say a month of that level of, of intensity, I I probably would not advise. Uh, I, I really would advise if it's going to be very, very hard and, and strenuous, I would advise a week. I would advise a week. I, I spend many hours on my art every day and I was almost burnt out. Now, as far as sleep is concerned, I didn't, I didn't, well, I didn't lose sleep, but I sort of pushed sleep away. Like, so I, I moved my sleep schedule up an hour, which was, or, or down an hour, uh, forward an hour, I mean to say. Uh, so I, I, I didn't lose sleep. I still got the same amount of sleep, but it was, it was off. You know, my, my, my body clock was off. Like what, why are you going to bed so late? And more than that, I I really cap off composing uh, right right at midnight because for for composing for composers your ears do get tired your brain does get tired after a, an x amount of composing no matter how proficient you are or how much of a professional you are your your brain does get it it just stops listening you know your your mind is like I guess it sounds good but I can't hear it you you actually it's not like you can't audibly hear it, but you can't really hear how it can get better. So I usually, my days are, you know, uh, composing, teaching, a little bit of composing at night, and then I cap it off at midnight, whether composing or editing, and then I, uh, then I work on writing for about an hour or maybe an hour and a half, just to, uh, that, that's a, that's a way I unwind from all that music. And then I, I really, of course, listen to other people's music. The problem with composing your music and spending so much time in your music is, is you actually can get, get it stuck in your head. Even if you really like it, it it's, it's a nuisance. Your, your brain just does not unwind. So I, as far as composers are concerned, I would not recommend. Uh, I wouldn't recommend composing. I, I certainly wouldn't recommend composing all the way to your bedtime. No, no, give yourself an hour, give yourself, well, I would say more than an hour, at least two hours to do some other creative thing or some recreational thing or talking to a family member, 
uh, hanging out with friends or, or, or chatting or, or being on the phone with someone, something that would get your mind off all that created cr creativity, man. It's, it, it's a beast. And if you, if you don't tame it, it can actually, um, you know, get out, of, get out of control and get out of hand. Uh, so that's that, that I, I did sacrifice my normal sleep schedule for, for this hour, for this seven day stretch. This is why I only recommend seven days. I do not recommend a month. Daniel used to have it where it was 21 days, compose every, like compose a day. And, and I would, if it's 21 days, I recommend a sketch. I don't remember. I, I don't remember, recommend uh, full pieces. Uh, but, but he did 21 days, four times a year. Now he's doing seven days, once a month. Now, I think this is good for composers just trying it out or, or still homing in on their craft. But I already have like I have a backlog of projects I have to do. So I actually it's uh, I actually don't have to do it after this meeting with David Wise because I already have things to do. It, it's I think it'd be for people who really don't have a project coming up. I have. I still have like how, how many albums do I have? So two and two and a half albums I can I can still work on the, for the remainder of this year plus a single track I'm I'm fixing to do at least one single track just one and a really good one I hope um, but now actually after this challenge I'll, I'll have an album like if nothing comes up with um, you know David Wise you know if he's he's polite and gives gives his gives his critique but has no interest in uh, you know collaboration which I totally understand. I have an album worth of gaming music or game kind like it, it does it does sound like game gaming music so I I will probably add like that it's seven it would be seven tracks right now for that album probably a 10 to 12 track album which is huge for me I usually I usually cap it off at eight tracks but uh, that would be that would be a pretty lengthy album but but a lot of it is already done. I already have a huge head start on that. So that, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. So for, for you guys who frequently work on your art, if you do decide to do this boot camp mindset, uh, give yourself a week, a week straight. And if you actually do want to take like a Sabbath off, I, I would, I would, I would do that. So maybe five to six days straight. Um, I would not recommend a month of in intensive labor. It's just, it, it is, you, you will, you'll burn out your, your creative, that, that ignition, it just, it will, it'll fuse out. Um, and, and, and you could find yourself very discouraged that like, Oh, I don't have the energy for this as, and that's not true. It's just, you're, you're, you're burning the candle at both ends. So uh, I think, you know, I, I feel like I have other stuff to say, but maybe it will, it will come up with the, with, with the chat. Um, very interesting thing, too, is uh, I think you'll slim down. I think your body will actually slim down with so much cerebral and creative output. Maybe it, it depends on your diet. I actually have a pretty healthy diet, but um, I, I don't eat when I'm not hungry. I, I only eat my meals. If I snack between meals, it's, it's a special occasion. I'm, I'm hanging out with someone or like my, like my prof sometimes will have some popcorn or, or a bag of candy or something like that. But daily I, I don't eat between meals. Um, but when I was in like this hyper-focused mode, I, I had to force myself to get up and fix dinner and eat dinner. I, I could hear my stomach growling like, oh no, let me let me get this done. And then my I remember warring with my stomach like one one night, it was like eight or eight thirty, and I and I had been really, really just chugging along. And my my stomach's like, no, you're you're you need food. You need you need this, uh, some, some, some more energy, get, get some carbs, get some, get some protein, you know, carbs in your vegetables and all that. And, um, I was, I think there was one day I was looking at myself in the mirror. I was like, Oh my goodness, I think I slimmed down. Cause it was just so much. You, you, you don't eat when you're so focused. Uh, and I'm not saying this in an unhealthy way. Like you have to skip meals. No, no, no. It's just that I, 
I just didn't think about eating. Like I didn't, I, my, my stomach had to say, Hey, time to make dinner, time to eat it. Um, cause you're, you're not, I, I'm going to, I'm going to shut you down. <laughs> my body, your, your body's going to shut you down if, if you don't eat. So, um, there's, there's also that too. It's like, if you're, if you're even cerebral, it's not even physical, it's not even physical, uh, uh, activity, cerebral activity, actually, um, depending on your diet you eat already could actually, uh, slim you down. Uh, my, my, my metabolism went straight up through these, um, very intensive seven days. I actually don't know if a lot of thinking and, and if you do a lot of mental act activity and exertion, I don't know if you actually burn calories. Um, uh, I know that sounds funny. I, 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 I felt like I read it somewhere where your metabolism just boosts up if you do a lot of um, creative output. Uh, but uh, th I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting as well. But I didn't forfeit healthy choices like, yeah, eat dinner. Uh, yes, get get your seven, seven and a half hours of sleep. I, I definitely had my, my amount of sleep and, and the amount of food that I needed. So uh, yeah, I think I will we'll go into the chat. That was kind of an impromptu. Um, just to, just what to expect. Uh, oh, another thing too is this is this is what you should expect for like a seven day challenge of of this kind of artistic boot camp. Uh, your other priorities have to be put on hold. So I I said it was seven days where I said no to producing my album. Seven days where I didn't write. I didn't uh, edit. I didn't do any of my writing. I didn't do anything on my on my space opera, and it, and saying no to my album was really hard. But I was like, I, I got to try this. I got to try this. So I I I, I put a week off on uh, other projects for for this for this project. So um, your your I your priorities will change. Um, your 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 kind of meal plan or your your sleep schedule could change. Um, as long as you don't compromise, get, get the sleep you need, get the food you need. Um, but that, that, that also may change. Um, and you just really don't think about anything else. <laughs> I had a hard time reading scriptures in the morning. I was like, oh my goodness, I, I, I should concentrate. It's the book of Isaiah. It's kind of a chewy book anyway, but, um, I, your, your, your level of concentration is, is, is shifted to it. It's, it's, you don't, if you're scattered brained, it kind of just zoom homes in on one, one topic. So anyway, that, that's what to expect. And if you don't frequently practice and produce art, then I wouldn't recommend the, the, the boot camp mentality. I, I really just, I do recommend this to people who already uh, work a lot on their art <clears throat> daily, really. Dr. Y says, going green, Marines, drill instructor, sergeant. Engraver is on deck. Good. That's right. Oh, and that's another thing to, to expect. After your stint, after your seven-day stint or whatever, then it doesn't have to be seven days, but that, that's what I did. Uh, I did a whole week. Um, rest. Give give yourself, like, a, a, at least a day of rest. I, I actually... Did, I took three days of resting from my composing. I caught up on my teacher tasks. I uh, caught up on, oh, what else did I catch up on? I just listened to other people's music. What else did I do? Oh yeah, I, I, I'm doing some housekeeping work on my YouTube channel. I did strictly menial tasks for like really, really three days. Uh, probably one to two days I needed, but it was Sunday on the third day. I'm like, All right, I'm just going to listen to other people's music and, um, and, and get my mind off of my music. Like that, that's, that's one thing on, if, especially music, I can't speak for visual artists, but if, when you're so focused intensely on something, your, your mind is kind of stuck on that thing and you have to, you really have to break out of it. So that, that's also something to expect. Matthew Flynn says, I am an artist as well. Oh, good. I, excuse me. 
Let's see. I, I hope what I had said was uh, beneficial. Olsen says, you will make Leia plus size proud. Oh, from watching Winter Soldier? Yeah, I, was, I, I enjoyed it. Now, I didn't, I sort of knew a little bit about it already, just having read synopses of different films before. Uh, but I had expected that all the Avengers were, were going to be there. And it was, it was fine. It was, it was like a trio. And, and that, was, that was enough. Or no, about four people, including the Falcon. Owen oh, says, I don't think the purpose of an army obstacle is to have fun, especially for an out of shape chap like myself. I could barely do push-ups or planks. I I gotta get back to doing push-ups. I can I can um I, I showed the prof uh, a few weeks back. And it, so like this is the floor and this is me, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm I'm I, I go halfway down before I come back up. I don't go all the way down. Oh, it's pretty pretty sad. Yeah, actually, that's 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 pretty true. Navy SEALs are the closest thing to a super soldier. Horizon Talker says the SEALs don't have boot camp; they have underwater demolition training, among other things. That that idea just that's crazy. That's crazy. That's so crazy. I I have mad respect for any SEAL. <laughs> Doctor Wally says, "Proud son of a Marine here. Good, awesome." I don't think I had any Marines in my family. Yes, Wolf 10, 34 this Saturday. 34 is a good number. I mean, I kind of miss being 33 because I love that number, but uh, 34 is also a good number. Excuse me. Wolf 10 says, but besides me, congrats on your work sound. I only need to follow your example of a workaholic. I don't, I don't, I don't. Well, I don't want to say workaholic. Um, I am not a workaholic. I, I mean, I see, I've, I've experienced um, strain uh, in families. I've seen strain in families for people overworking themselves and, and all that. So I don't, I don't believe in um, overworking. I, I do believe in diligence though. I do believe in structural discipline. Uh, but I, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a music teacher who tells students to practice and I, I practice, <laughs> I practice my craft. Um, and, and I have the schedule. I do, I do teach part-time. I have a lot of students. I think I have about 40 students, but uh, about, I don't know how many, I think maybe 40, maybe a couple, couple, couple of them being an hour long, but it really is part-time, uh, not including commuting. Uh, but I do have that extra I am blessed to have that extra time to just, you know, focus and, and work on my art. Um, I, I, I don't watch TV. I don't watch um, whatever's on streaming. Like, well, have you seen this show? I'm like, I, I just work on my art. Wolf 10 says, also check out DK64 soundtrack when you get the chance. I played DK64. Um, I, I like it. I I love I really do like it. And a part of it's I, I enjoyed the game. Uh Grant Kirkthorpe is is his name. Uh he actually followed me on link, LinkedIn at one point, but I decided to not continue with LinkedIn. Um I like his I like his compositions, but I really don't care for the instrumentation. It works for that game because of the 64 experience. Uh, there's this one, I would love to do an electronic remix of this song. Um, is it Hideout Helm? I would love to do a remix of that, like an electronic remix of that one day. It's good. I like the composition. I'm just not a fan of that instrumentation. It's got this kind of cheesy trombone sound. And you know, I know what um, I think it's um, what's his name? Lanky Kong, who who plays the trombone. 
So yeah, it's, it's, it's fine. <laughs> um, I, I like the score. I just, uh, there, there should be a revamp of, of instrumentation for his music, uh, it, for at least for that game. Yes, Horizon Talker, are you talking about seven, min seven minutes of music in seven days? Now, again, nothing polished. Melodies need to be rewritten. Uh, the structure needs to be expanded upon. Um, different, uh, I, I used more or less the same instrumentation because I wanted continuity. I did want musical continuity between all uh, seven pieces because it's part of the same game or the same idea, the same story, the same world. But if now, if I consider putting that music into an album, I would work with somewhat varied instrumentation. Still have the same coherence, you know, that same musical coherence, but yeah. So just kind of fleshing it out. I think, uh, I think I had heard at one time where it was crunch time uh, for the, the set, the, the post-production team on uh, Lord of the Rings. I think I had heard Howard Shore or at least one of his uh, assistants, editors or whatever, music editors, say that Howard Shore was composing up to six mu minutes of symphony music a day. Six minutes. Minutes are a very, very long time of music. L like, like film, actually. Film would be a long time, too. Uh, that, that's, that's crazy to think about. But he was, he was pushed to the wire at one point, I, I as they all were, I think. Thank you, Melissa. I, I, I would love to be selected. I think I, I'm not having any expectations. Um, but it's, I treated, I actually did treat this challenge like an audition, like a music audition. You know, I, I put in about, if we're, you know, averaging eight, eight hours a day, maybe, maybe, let's say seven hours a day that, you know, for seven days, I, I think I, I think I put in many hours, 50 hours around that. That sounds like a lot. I'm going to say, I'll, 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 I'll say 45. I'll say 45. So it was like a 45 hour audition. Big Al Presents says, do you have tunes or melodies in your head all the time or do you create on the spot while composing? And yeah, actually that's a, that's a great, great question. I have both. I, I, ha I have both. I have melodies that have been itching to, to get on the page uh, for, for a number of years. I, I do have some, some great melodies in mind and, and I'll be driving. And if it's like a 35 minute drive, I'll just start humming those melodies and, and try to try to try to think of what that music would sound like with different instruments or different electronic instruments. Um, when I compose, uh, I actually do compose intuitively, intuitively. People would say like, well, wait a second, you have melodies in your head. Why don't you write those melodies down? Um, part of it is I, I don't feel like I'm at the skill or I don't have the libraries of instruments that I'd want for that. Um, uh, the other, the other thing is I just, uh, I, I, th those are ingrained in my brain and I, I know they will, you know, stick around and I, and I do have a, a specific mood and in instrumentation for those, um, uh, for, for going on the spot. Yes. Yes. In fact, actually, um, uh, those, those pieces that I composed were pretty much on the spot. I, I, I got a rhythmic kit. I'm like, okay, I've got this. Some, some of those days I had a specific melody in mind. Um, day one, I got my kit down and I got my bass line down. And then I got my harmony down and then I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll dream up a melody around this, this very specific harmony and bass line. Day two, I was thinking, um, I want a mixolydian mode for C major. So, so a nice major chord with a low seven. So it's going to be in C, uh, not C, C sharp because the title screen was in C sharp minor. So, so the uh, so the title screen was C sharp minor, 
So I wanted to do this, the character selection in C sharp major, but in a Mixolydian mode where the, the seventh degree is low. So instead of B sharp, it'd be B. Dun, 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 dun. I think that's right. All right, uh, so so that was it. And then, um, oh, the melody of uh, day five, everything worked around the bass line. The melody and the chords were were specific to that bass line. Um, day three, the fight scene, I woke up with the melody. I'm like, this should be the melody for the fight scene. And so I composed around that melody. I didn't do it in order. I didn't. The thing I thought first wasn't always first. I would say, okay, I have this melody in mind. Uh, I'm going to use this rhythmic kit. I'm going to use this bass line. Um, and then, then the chords, then the melody. Cause I, I, I've just, you know, re you know, in the last four years, I've always started with the percussion and bass and I've always done chords and I've always done the melody, even if I've had, even if I have the melody before uh, everything else. Uh, day seven, day seven. That was, that was interesting. Um, I, I had a very specific sequence in mind, uh, for how it was going from, from chord to chord. And I was, and I was coming up with a baseline that just did not match this. And I'm like, no, I have to get this right. I have to get this right because this has to stay in here. So I was really forcing the musical narrative to, to, really work around this very specific idea. Like I'm, I'm keeping this, this is, this is too important. I got to keep this. And so everything, I, I forced everything to adhere to that idea and it worked actually. It was, it was a lot more natural than I thought. So, so yeah, I did challenge myself that way. Uh, but yes, yes. All of that was really uh, more or less in intuitive apart from a couple days where I had the melody in mind. Uh, Zootopia says, doesn't the burn feel good though? When I have, when I felt that way, it's this great, this big sense of accomplishment. Yes, it did feel good. It did feel good. And, and, and I have something now. I mean, I've, I've, I've got, I've got an album. Like I've, I've got about 70, say it's, yeah, maybe 60% of an album ready, uh, ready to complete in terms of structure. Wolf 10 says tunnel chase is such an adrenaline rush. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I worked with descending lines because you know, you're going like when, when, when he said tunnel chase, well, yeah, it could be a, a tunnel on a road, but I was thinking like almost like a, well, salamanders, you know, kind of amphibian water sewage. I'm kind of thinking of something under like subterranean. So I was, I was thinking of going under musically too. Uh, Matthew Fullen says, I think what you're talking about is a motion comic. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think that, that, that is true. He said virtual comic, so it could mean something else. Um, but he, but he's writing music for it. So I'm, I'm sure it's for a video. Horizon Talker says, yes, constant practice is vital. <clears throat> this is why I feel nano, Rymo is often counterproductive. It's like running a marathon with no conditioning beforehand. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't recommend people do that unless they are are already writing frequently. Yeah. So we're on the same wavelength. Thank you. That's good. Oh, really? There's one in April. Interesting. I I don't. The, the one thing I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying that that event is isn't good, um, or, or or what have you. But uh, the only thing I would say with with something like that, with an, a monthly event, um, well, I would say a, a yearly event like that, is that like, oh, I'm going to do it all in November or all in April, and then nothing for the re rest of you know the other ten months. Uh, so that that that's where you could get into trouble. Like Nano uh, Nano Rimo really should be the the boot camp for writers who are already writing. Owen Lister says, on a different topic, I watched The Maltese Falcon last week for the first time. That is one of the prof's favorite films. I like it. I I liked it a lot too. I like the music. 
I won't take the sap for you. <laughs> it's a great line. Uh, I've always found an unwinding time before sleeping to be important. Yes. Adding at least half an hour to let your creative muscles relax is important or you'll take forever to fall asleep. Yeah, I, I've been, I would say the last couple of weeks, I've been really struggling with turning off my brain. I, I don't really have that problem when I'm writing after I compose or when I veg with a YouTube channel or, or read, you know, uh, prof on his Catholic uh, Bible Geek channels. We're going to do Lord of the Rings. So Lord of the Rings is going to be something I read as as one of my last things uh, to do uh, before I go to bed. When I compose uh, this last week on, with such, such uh, that level intens of intensity, I was composing a couple of those days. I was composing right until I went to bed. That That's, that's not good. <laughs> I don't recommend that because I would just be awake for two hours just thinking about my music. And, and Wolf 10 is, has, has heard my music. It, it's, it's very, you know, techno kind of Mega Man. Everyone's calling it Mega Man. I'm like, okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, but it's really, really upbeat in your face. It's like, it's between 144 beats per minute to, my last one was 168. I mean, really, really fast for really fast tempo for music. Um, uh, let's see. Wolf 10 says, I've been running up a hill out of park. I visit on my walk for fitness about four laps around it. Plus pull-ups and, uh, back, some pull-ups and back pull-ups. Yeah. That's like, that's like, that reminds me of the scene on, uh, the, at the very start of the winter soldier on your left. Don't, don't say, don't say. <sighs> I just love, I love that Sam Wilson. He's, he, you see him jog frequently. Or really, it's running um, in the film, and then he's 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 just booking it out this window uh, of, of of a building where where the the Hydra aircraft just comes comes into the building. So he's like he's just booking it, and, you know, go, going bulldozing his way through the glass. I thought that was a, uh, but he had to run to get to that. So he, to survive, he had to run that fast. It's pretty pretty. Um, pretty, pretty fun. I like him as a character. Like, I don't know anything about the new Marvel TV series that's, that's happening over on Disney plus, but, um, I know that a lot of people aren't happy and I like Sam Wilson as a character and it probably is kind of sad what's happening to him now. Um, but anyway, that's what, I mean, Oh, wait, I'm skipping some some people, but uh sure your brain uses calories if you're using it more, you you burn more. Yeah, I was I was thinking along those lines. And I felt it, man. My my appetite just like went through the roof that week. But I was still eating the same diet. I wasn't eating more food. There was one night I was um it was like college again, all over again. I was eating dinner like close to midnight. I was so you know, ashamed, like, I should be eating, like, three hours, I should have ate three hours ago. Matthew Flynn says, so it's like, it's like the fact that I have the opening to Shin, Getter, Robo, Armageddon stuck in my head, probably. <laughs> I, I, does that music sound like the one, the stuff that I produced last week? Dr. Y has an important bit of information. Uh, Army boot camp last 10 weeks, Marines 12, Navy 9. Yeah, okay, so about a, about two months, wow. Yeah, that's, that's a lot. All righty. Yeah, Melissa Harris says, I like the Captain America comics by Jack Kirby. It's good. I, li I like Captain America. I was I was I was telling uh the prof last night, and it just dawned on me, you know, I'm I'm new to Marvel, so I don't I don't I'm not up to speed on it like you guys are. Uh, but I love that Captain America has a shield, but he doesn't have a sword. 
you know, he, he uses his shield to get, to get the mission done, which is awesome. It's really cool. It's like, actually, it's, it's really like He-Man's sort of power. <laughs> Planking for 20 seconds feels a lot longer than, uh, than it sounds. Yeah, I can imagine. Daniel Craig. I always feel like uh, the odd man out because I'm not an artist. I don't know. I always, I always think you are an artist, but you're a, you're a DJ, right? Uh, there, there's some art that goes into that. But, uh, but you know, actually, the thing is, I like what I say. I, I hope applies to business people or people wanting to start up a business or, or even just the professional in general. See, I'm. I'm an artist, and we're going to talk about this a little bit next week, a little bit of a teaser, but, you know, my channel is is, is about art. It, it is, but, you know, I, I want to talk about the business aspect of it. I'd like to talk about the marketing aspect, you know, the more I do it myself. Um, so, you know, e even if even if I don't have artists listening in on, on this topic, uh, I, I hope this idea, like the boot camp mindset is like, is applicable for the business person as well. Or, or, or anyone, any, any type of professional constructor, you know, you know, uh, wood carver, uh, carpenter, I'm, th I'm thinking carpenter, that's the word I'm looking for. Um, feel free to listen to the Winter Soldier Rewatch on Birdman's channel, Way Plus Size, and I joined him on that one, shameless plug. I, that's actually one reason why I, I couldn't visit you guys on that on that week because it's like oh we're, we're we're so close we're so close and we've we've the prof and I have watched agents of shield up to uh, up to that point at the time of the the winter soldier and it's like oh man shield well I, I can't uh, well I'm sure all of you have watched winter soldier but if you haven't Turn, turn on the mute right now, but I kind of was a little sad when uh, when S Shield is compromised and and I, I recognize some of the characters like ah you you're a bad guy that's too bad. Wolf Ten says I'm mostly a diligent worker at my work, even though it's a movie theater. I take it very very seriously. Minor frustrations aside, I still love my work. That's good. That's good. I never worked at a, a, at a movie theater. You know, I would, uh, I don't know if I could because like, aren't you required to like go into the, the movies while they're premiering? And I like, if there's like a horror film happening, I couldn't walk in there. I, I, I hope there would be exceptions, but no, I, I can't walk into some, some horror film. Excuse me. Yo, oh, yeah, D K, Donkey Kong, D K, D K, Donkey Kong is here. I think that's a that that the worst rap ever ever made to start to start that game. If you choose her, you'll not choose wrong. With a skip and a hop, she's one cool comp. What I'm doing uh, art-wise is is working on one-shot comic, on a one-shot comic of Beetle Blaze, taking a little break from the actual Beetle Blaze story and trying to get better at anatomy. I mean, um, I think when, when you say anatomy, I, I'm, I'm assuming... Um, the, the frame of a, of a human body or a character body. Um, I would say if you have, I, I would say practice for sure. But if you, if you do have technical, if you don't have the technical know-how of, of doing that too, um, don't, don't push yourself to practice so much where you don't have actual formal instruction. Um, there are some people who learn violin and they're self-taught. And they can play violin, but oh my goodness, they have really bad technique because they've they've never uh, consulted with someone or took a month worth of lessons, um, and and so they would play music and they. Could 
could play it with some capability, but their technique was all wrong where they can't play it with, um, you know, flexibility, relaxation, uh, poise, expression, tone, just basic tone technique that comes um, with, with a good left hand technique or a good bow technique. Um, so it, it's, I, I feel like the, also the boot camp mentality is really for those who are also pretty proficient. Writing is different. Actually, I would say, well, maybe the prof, prof has a, a different opinion on that. Maybe writing is a little bit different because I, I've only gotten better at writing because of, of just constant practice. Uh, and there, I'm sure there are some technical things that I'm missing here and there, um, or maybe frequently, maybe I'm missing a very key thing all the time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but as far as like something tangible, like a sketch of a, of a human dynamic pose or, or animal, whatever, or just like a character, alien, animal, human, whatever, or, or something like a uh, violin technique. Um, also, I would say just give yourself like a month worth of lessons. Say, hey, um, what am I, what am I doing here? What are my strengths? But what, what, what can I be working on? What can I be practicing on? So practicing on the technique. I, I'm just so, I, I, I do like my job as a teacher. I, I do. I do like my job as a, a violin instructor, but you know, every single lesson, every single lesson I teach every single week, I'm always just harping on my students, not not like aggressively, like you're not getting it right. But I, I just all constantly say the same thing over and over again to all my students. Like maybe maybe 10 of my students have a bow technique issue. Maybe uh, 10 other students have a, a left hand technique issue. Maybe a few of those students have both problems. Um, I have I have several students who are having a hard time with their bow arm, their, the, the leveling of their bow arm. And it's just, it's just one thing after, it's just the same thing. It's just telling my students the same blasted thing over and over again. Um, and I'm not frustrated because violin is such an, it's, a, it's such an abstract instrument. It's, it's absurd. So I, I don't mind reiterating the, the technical things. Um, but I was thinking, yeah, I would never subject my students to boot camp um, for violin because they, they need the basics first. Um, but uh, the one-shot comic of, of Beetle Blaze. Yeah, I would say, I think uh, you, you're saying getting better at anatomy. I think that's really where an instructor should come in. I, I don't think that's a self-taught thing. Um, at least like a month or so, like two months of instruction would be really good. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have water in my throat. Excuse me. I had a, I had soup. I had very thin soup. It was like fish and broccoli and vegetables. And some of the broth just, you know, uh, went down the wrong pipe. And I feel like I'm still struggling with that. Matthew Flynn says, yeah, it's the same for me. I always have artwork floating around my head, just waiting to be put on paper. Well, well hey, man, uh, I'm going to be real with you as a teacher. I produce stuff on a frequent basis. I produce albums and stuff like that. So the stuff in my head is because I, I already have a backlog of things I have to do. If you're, if it's only in your head, that's a problem. So no, it, ha it definitely has to be, uh, I hope that's an exception. Like your ideas in, in your head are an exception. I have, I have melodies in my head, um, but it's not because they're stuck in my head and I'm not producing. Uh, so, so I would say teacher, teacher, teacher sound engraver just came, you know, came out. <laughs> Make, make sure you produce some some art. That That is the most important thing. Dr. Y says, maybe my idea of doing a 50, a 45 piece Super Sentai Power Rangers art project is a bit ambitious. 45, I mean, what kind of piece are you talking about? Are you talking about a sketch or sculpture or a 3D animation? What are you talking about exactly? I, I, I probably actually, I want to even do the boot camp for a project. I would, I would focus on time. How much work can I get 
in well no maybe not time because i my, my project was specific it was seven prompts seven musical pieces for a prompt that was that was my goal time actually is going to depend on that now that i think about it wolf 10 says not making it a marvel stream uh but one thing i point out in one of my streams was people forget his uh, extreme body conditioning to handle his jet flight maneuvering yeah i mean that's that's pretty cool stuff captain america can't fly you know falcon had to save him at one point It, come on, guys! You can't be Captain America and the Falcon. It has to be one or the other. That's, that's just that's just like that's that's just that's just like a five year old saying, "I like this guy, so he's gonna be like three superheroes because I like him so much." <laughs> like, no, he could be one awesome superhero. Samuel Proctor, what I miss? Uh, I was talking about the boot camp, the boot camp mindset, and how. It's it's tough, but it's it's worth it. It is beneficial to the artist. The series reduced Sam's character into an unneeded character study on race politics. Skip it sound. You don't need to be. Oh, well, I don't know. I, I posted that before I started reading it. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what they're doing with that character, but I liked his intro. I I liked his intro a lot in the Winter Soldier. It's a very good character intro. Oh, D, DJing is uh, just a hobby. I'm a software engineer. Do, do, do. Oh, we got uh, shot down in flames. Your theme. Oh, thank you. Your theme for Dark Queen last week was excellent for a sketch. Yeah, I, I mean, I like it. I'm going to use it. I'm probably That's probably going to be music for more like a, a, an area. It sounds more like an arid kind of desert area. It doesn't sound like music for a character. But this villain, this villainess, I think she's supposed to be She's supposed to be pretty edgy. She's supposed to, I I, I get the impress, the, this impression. She's supposed to be like that villainous from Battletoads. Um, kind of like a vampire slash biker girl kind of look. So I think she was supposed to have that edge. And to be honest, I was, I was composing such upbeat music up until that point. I really wanted a creative break. That's actually another thing too that you guys can work on is, well, I feel it more viscerally as, as a musician. But you know, let's say you're working on so much. Uh, so for music, I was like upbeat, really fast, a lot of music, a lot of energy for the first three days. And I actually had to still put in the same amount of work, but do something slower, do something that was a break from all that. So maybe, maybe you guys are inking or something or doing something super labor intensive with your art. And then, then the next day, it's the same amount of work in, in terms of time and effort, but it's for something a little bit more relaxed or different, like like a sketch or like a 3D modeling exercise or something. Um, I, I needed that Dark Queen sketch to be slower because I I was my my day three was was the fight scene, and that that took a lot out of me. That took a lot of energy. Uh, Wolf 10, you're saying something about Civil War, but it, but if it's the film, I haven't seen it. Uh, AJ Boomer was fortunate the wolf wasn't there for Civil War. He would quake at its uh, ferocity. Oh, that's cool. I've always wanted to work as a protectionist, especially 35 millimeter film. That's cool.
By the way, Wolten, you should call me SE because when you say no sound to my ears, that it's like you can't hear me. <laughs> we let everyone in and we clean the concession. Oh, for, for your for your theater work. Okay, got it. Okay, so you're only there. Um, we only go in there um, uh, if someone is doing something they're not supposed to do or kids are running around. Other than that, play the movie and they leave and, and we go home after cleaning. I see. I see. I like cleaning work. I, I really do appreciate that kind of work. Well, that's good. That's good, but... I, I would still say, you know, like people can look at um, violin videos. You, you just need the instructor. You just need the professional. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't recommend that enough. Um, you know, some people are self-taught. I, I mean, but what if what if you um like consider this? What if you practice the bad technique? Like, what if you had bad technique that you didn't you didn't know you were aware of? And you kept practicing it until it became a, a kind of style, but it wasn't the style you, you realized you wanted. So I would practice out of that book for sure. But I would also, I mean, there's, there's got to be some artists that can, you know, take you under their wing and um, let you, you know, let you shine, but also tell you, hey, uh, this this thing here isn't right. You got to you got to practice doing this here. So you'd be practicing the right technique. It, it, it grinds my gears when I have my students, like I, I tell them, I tell them you can like, so a, an example for poor technique that pretty much 90% of my students have, they, they hold their violin like this. You don't, you don't hold your violin like this and your, your thumb has to be vertical. So your I don't know if you can see that. Yes. Your thumb has to be vertical and your wrist has to be nice, nice and relaxed and pulled back. And, and this nice curve right there. They, I, I mean, I've, I've had students with me of like two years and stuff. And, and I say it every week, you cannot do this. And they'll practice that. But can you imagine if I, it, even if I didn't say that, that they're practicing playing the violin with wrong technique. I had, I had one girl say, I can't play that in tune. I said, I know because your, your wrist is like this. So your, your fingers can't reach the distance. Not to mention, you're probably going to develop carpal tunnel. <laughs> um, I don't say that, but but actually, no, I, I have said in front of students and their parents, I'm saving you from hand surgery. <laughs> I'm saving you from arm surgery. So um, it, it I, I don't know. I, I I would say, yeah, learn learn from the book. But I would just like give give your give yourself a little kindness, save some money. And, and find a professional to study under for about three months or so. Because uh, you'll probably find, sorry, my chair is sinking. <laughs> you'll probably find um, a lot of good feedback from that. Wolfton says, to debunk a concession myth, we do not watch the movie because we work there. Though we do peek in the theater. Yeah, I just, I just wouldn't want to, you know, stop an altercation in the middle of a horror film. <laughs> it's Knitter's Network. Hello, Knitter. Oh, your comment went. Hello. Oh no, your comment froze. There. Oh, it disappeared. There it is. Okay. Nice to see you, Knitter. Owen, Owen Lister says, Wolf did mention I should work on muscle definition, so I, I got to work on that. Yeah, at least you know what to improve on. But there, I mean, like, I mean, do you study? Do you study other artists? I mean, like, really study, um, you know, how the, how the proportions, you know? Like some, I mean, some artists who are professionals, I, I only know this from listening to different interviews, but some artists who are professionals who, ha who have their cover art published and stuff like that, um, by, 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 by eyes of the other artists they're like the proportions are all wrong this this woman she looks like a giant and these people flying to her you know to to attack her with a sword they look really tiny and stuff and and it, it's like distance you know she's supposed to be nearer to you than than the 
these people flying or on dragons to her sword and sorcery or whatever. Um, but he, he, I remember this, this one particular guy, Jesse white, he was, he was critical of the proportions. So, um, yeah, you gotta have that. Yeah. Professional eye as well. Let's see. Oh, I see. I see. Dr. Y says this year is the 45th anniversary of Super Sentai. My plan is creating a single design based on each team from beginning to now. Okay. I think that could work. Wolfton says one thing I preach powers do not make the hero. No. I mean, Red Skull proved that to us, right? Oh, when Lister says, when it comes to drawing, I mostly either design a character I made up or I do random doodling. I never made a masterpiece. I mean, masterpieces take years to mas make that master. <laughs> I'm not saying the piece itself makes um, takes years to make, but to make a masterpiece, you, you, I'll, I'll be so... I'll be so real. And I, I know I probably think, I would say a lot of artists don't, you know, a lot of current independent artists might not agree with me and that's okay. But to make a masterpiece, you have to be a master. I you really do. You have to be a master at your craft. Um, I, I don't, I haven't made a masterpiece. I said, I inflected the word I like, this is such a shock. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I saw a lot of lot of things that I have to, um, you know, work on and, and work toward, but I would, uh, but that's not to sit, that's not going to stop me from getting something that is professionally done. I hope it was interesting netters. I, I was, uh, it was a, it was an impromptu. And so I could have, I could have just been rambling when I, when I do impromptus, I feel like I'm repeating myself too much. I'm not against repeating what I say, especially if it's an important point, but I'm like, did I say that two times or five times? Oh, it's, it's close to 11. Um, I'll catch up with chat and we'll see how it's going. Um, but I think we will wrap it up probably by 11, maybe a little after 11. Just my thing. I, I like people so much. I give them a, a random nickname. Oh yeah, thanks. I, I think you were saying you were saying no sound, but go ahead when you put no in front of my name. That it's a like no se or whatever, because um, I'll think, oh no, can you not hear me? What, what's wrong with my sound? <laughs> but yeah, I, I get that. Daniel Craig says Tango people will famously practice the wrong technique until it's ingrained in them. It's it's really unfortunate. Like I, I mean, as as a teacher, you can only do so much, um, and then you have to kind of talk talk. If if they're not adult students, you, you talk to the parents saying, "Listen, they're they're doing this incorrectly, and it's going to cause pain in their arm and their hands. It's going to cause strain." Um, actually, this one guy. Um, this one man I'm teaching, he's in his mid sixties, I think. And he visits the chiropractor because of, um, he has a lot of pain in his right shoulder. And, um, most it's not just him. Let's see if I can tilt the, the screen just a little bit so you can see some of my arm. Uh, this is my right arm. It looks like my left arm right now, but it's, it's my right arm. Um, a lot of my students, and it's easier to show you with the violin, but I don't have it right now with me. Um, they'll, you know, when you're when you're bowing the violin, you extend your arm. Now, not not abruptly like it hurts. It's just an extension of your arm, and and going up and down like this. Well, a lot of my students, including my older students, you know, in their 60s, they'll they'll row their arm like they're they're going to roll their arm back like they're they're um, rowing a boat. And what that what that does is. Um, uh, your your bow should be a pretty straight line parallel to the bridge of the violin. And what that does is if you roll back, then your the bow is going to be at a, a at a terrible angle. And and it's gonna it's gonna trace it's gonna have the sound kind of tracy and high and 
uh, partially and um, woody. You know, it's not like a violin tone, but it's more of like an aspirated woodwind instrument. Um, it just, it doesn't look good and doesn't sound good. And, and he, he's visiting the chiropractor and, and I said, Hey, wait a second. You, you have to actually extend, you need to extend your, your arm. Um, you, you can't roll your arm. You have to extend it. A lot of people do, a lot of people do this rolling back and I have to, I have to, I have to have like a binder to, to, to hold their, um, elbow in place. Or I say, you know, go to the wall. Um, and I could demonstrate but uh, uh, maybe another time. <laughs> um, but uh, what was I going with this? Um, uh, it, was, it was something Daniel Craig said. Yeah, the wrong technique until it's ingrained. Well, when he started extending his arm, he, he started ha having less shoulder pain because he wasn't, he, he was using his arm laboriously to get, to get the violin sound. He, he needed to do less movement and, and a lot more, um, you know, uh, restricted space, but it was easier for his shoulder. It was easier for his shoulder to do that. I have another woman in her sixties who almost had to quit the violin because she was putting so much pressure on the bow with her whole right hand instead of just, actually the, the pressure comes just from this, uh, this um, uh, pointer finger. She, she did that one little change from pushing down on her whole hand to just the pointer finger. She doesn't feel any pain or li little pain, a lot, lot less pain than before where she doesn't have to quit the violin. And so proper technique is vital. <laughs> I won't, I won't harangue on that. That's just, that's just a sound engraver being, being teacher sound engraver. Right, right, perfect. I'll I'll take that. I'll have to <clears throat> I'll have to remember to put S sound when I'm referring to your nickname. That's right. Oh, projectionist. Projectionist instead of protectionist. I think I think I heard I saw the word protectionist and I I, I thought it was something different. That's cool. That's cool. Well, thank you, Netter. That's been a long time since I've, I've heard that. Yeah, that's right. Like them. Like my video. <laughs> no, no, not too much information, Matthew, about Marvel characters, because uh, cause I don't I don't know this. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, I, I noticed that Neil Adams, I think that he has a famous YouTube channel, right? He uses his shoulders instead of his wrists when drawing. That's been hard to readjust to do. That, that's that been hard to readjust to do, to readjust, yeah. I think we're all teachers deep down. Those who can't, what's the phrase, teach? I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that uh, phrase. It's um, the phrase is those who can't teach. Uh, no, you have to be a master at what, what you do uh, and teach well. And they're two separate things. Uh, rarely can you be subpar or mediocre and teach that. Yeah. The more I know about the violin and the more I practice myself, the, the better I can teach. All right. Looks like I'm caught up. Looks like I am caught up. So, I mean, this is a this is a really good uh, place to stop. Um, so maybe I'll kind of say what's going on uh, with my channel. Actually, yeah, actually, let's um. There are a few things that could be coming up to give you guys a heads up. Um. Well, first thing, of course, sound sound experimentation every Thursday. Uh, and I think I'll just do something out of logic. I'm going to really try to work on my album the next five days before the prof comes to visit me. It's going to be great. We're going to watch He-Man, 
the real He-Man with the real Tila. Uh, hashtag justice for, for, for Tila. <laughs> um, so, so just the normal stuff. I'm going to try to do a, a Super Nintendo soundtracks uh, video, but those are very time intensive to make. So I might not have the time to do it this week. I'd like to do one actually before. Hopefully I meet David Wise. I don't know. Daniel from BGM, are you are you listening? <laughs> you now you if you are you you've seen me do a live stream so I, I'm personable. <laughs> um, so so yeah, just look look be on the lookout for definitely sound experimentation. Maybe a lo I think I might do a, a quick Logic Pro tip this week. Maybe hopefully a soundtrack uh, video. That'd be awesome if I could do that. Um, now there is likely depends on if I get a couple students, but I already, ha I think I already have one student. I probably will be teaching beginning June for eight weeks. I will probably be teaching Monday nights, uh, a logic pro class, which I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I hope something comes of it. I would really like to be able to teach logic pro, but I did give them my Monday nights. So if I do have that cemented from June to end of July, teaching online Logic Pro Monday nights, I will actually, unfortunately, for at least two months, be unavailable to stream Monday nights. I would try to stream weekly, but for that length of time, this would start in June. I think this would start the, actually, let me just pull up that that date. I, I had a, a parent call me. Actually, I called a parent who has a, she has a 17 year old who's interested in learning logic. And if I get one more student, I'm already teaching. Um, yeah, the first week of June. So the first week of June, all the way to the end of July, I could be teaching Monday nights. So I'll, I'll definitely give you guys the, the final official date uh, toward the end of May. Um, and then if that happens, if I'm if I'm not doing Monday nights for a couple months, what I would like to do is probably a Saturday afternoon. And this, it would actually be Saturday evening. It would be Saturday, possibly six thirty to seven thirty or six thirty to eight Eastern time. I think that's what it would be because I, I still would love to stream weekly, but maybe for for the summer I might have to actually do it a different day. Uh, and I love my Monday nights, but I would, I kind of want to jump at this chance to teach Logic Pro. I think that would be pretty cool. And maybe it could be lucrative. I'm really hoping this could be lucrative for, for at least this next year. So hopefully, hopefully. So be on, be on the lookout for that. I, I, we might have to take eight weeks off, um, uh, Monday nights, at least as far as sound engraver is concerned. Of course, people could, you know. And you're like, oh, cool. Let, let's let us let let's take Monday nights, <laughs> and you guys can have like a fun time or something. So that's that's kind of on on the dock uh, going into this this summer, uh, starting June. I have one student interested, but if I have two, yes, I I will be I will be committing Monday nights to teaching uh, up until nine. So it'll be a long teaching day for me. All right. And I see some other comments too. Uh, and then actually, I'll get back to the comments, but uh, things are, I'm, I'm not gonna get give too much um, ahead of what's, what's happening in my schedule this summer, but there actually are some rapid changes happening. Um, actually within the next six weeks, um, some rapid changes happening uh, for me. Um, maybe it might be like, Actually, to be honest, guys, you might, this might be the last, like last month, you might see this, this room here. Um, so, so I, um, something didn't actually come, come up where I might be relocating for a couple months this summer before actually moving closer to the prof in his state. So, um, so just be on your toes there. Uh, but in any case, the, there's going to be um, hopefully more, in getting into the summer, down down the line in the summer, I would like to continue working on my soundtrack series for Super Nintendo, and I would actually like to continue 
also my hero series. Now my hero series is going to be short. It's not going to be long. It's certainly not going to be like my, my uh, super Nintendo soundtrack series. Um, my hero series will involve, um, uh, it, it will involve Captain America with his hero theme. It will also involve Luke Skywalker. So I did Superman, He-Man, Captain America, uh, uh, Luke Skywalker. Uh, but into this summer, I'm actually going to be doing also a special, uh, kind of a special analysis slash composing thing. It'll be fixed commentary, but then I'll, I'll be streaming about it. I will be, I, I would really like to do it this summer. I hope I can do it this summer. Um, I really would like to compose a theme for Batman because Batman does not have a fully fleshed out theme like Superman has. And also what's more, I'm not talking about the Wonder Woman show with Linda Carter. Wonder Woman, the character, she does not, she also does not have a theme like Superman has. So I would like to compose themes for those two and do an analysis of, of, of that music. And then if, if other heroes that I, uh, start, you know, looking over, probably not, that's probably just going to narrow down to six people. Uh, that, that, that's going to be the, the thing, but I, I will be talking more about film scores, um, or not film scores in, in, in anything in particular, but just the role of themes again, you know, music themes, because people were saying, well, you know, like there, there was a question and not knocking on whoever posted this on the, um, face group, uh, Facebook group, but it's like, what do you guys think of Wonder Woman's theme? Well, first of all, it was Zack Snyder's universe, um, so that's already problematic in the, in that kind of community. But the second thing is, it, it's it's awful. It's 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 the worst thing I've ever heard for any character, let alone Wonder Woman. It just doesn't work, and there are reasons why that that's not that's there's I won't even go into the detail. But it's not a theme. Like if if anyone says Wonder Woman theme, she has no theme. She has no music theme. Case, case closed. Well, not yet because I got to talk about why. Um, so anyway, so that I will start. I, I'd like to conclude my hero series this year, and hopefully this summer, maybe into uh, this. Uh, um, uh, what did I say? This September. All right. Batman does not have a theme. It's true. He does well. He has he has a, a couple good motives. He has musical motives like Elfman, uh, Shirley Walker, but he does not have a fully fledged theme, unfortunately. All right. Oh oh, that's what you mean, Netter, about how close. Well, not like, not to get into detail, but it's a uh, it's. Let's just say it's more accommodating. <laughs> um, so anyway, so that's that's kind of a, hopefully I, I I was probably rambling there, but that's that's kind of the channel news. I'm still doing my Thursday sound experiment uh, sound experimentation videos. Hopefully some videos for Saturdays, but kind of for, in, unless I don't get the class to teach, I'll, I'll still stream on Monday nights, but. If I do get the class, I won't be teach. I, I won't be doing uh, Monday night streams for probably two months. <clears throat> uh, Daniel Craig says those who can't isn't necessarily an insult. There are there are plenty of people who understand the fundamentals of a sport, but just don't have the physical chops to to pull it off at a pro level. I mean, maybe sports, but I I don't I don't buy that. Um, When you tell someone something is incorrect, you're you're a better teacher if you can explain why it, it would be incorrect. Now I can't speak for any sports coaches or anything like that, but I only know what to say about violin very specifically because I play violin masterfully. It might be different for sports coaches and stuff, but or dancers, something athletic, but I don't know. I don't know. I feel like well, shouldn't coaches have some experience in, in football? That's just my take. But I'm not, I don't follow sports, so I don't know. Entertainment fatigue tomorrow. That's cool. That's cool. And birthday stream as well. 
Uh, Daniel Craig says, however, they can help other people who are physically at pro level to perfect their technique. Yeah, maybe you're thinking sports. Maybe, maybe it's a musician thing, but like if you if you can't act, don't teach acting. That's, that's just the way I say, or the way I see it. But you know, I'm I'm being a, a cheeky teacher right now. I only say I only say what I say because I I do it six days a week. That's why I mastered my craft and my philosophy in traditional art. Yeah, good. Uh, how far away from the prof are you? I feel like that's, it's not specific, but it's, it's a drive. It's, it's, it's an after, if it's an afternoon's drive, meaning quite far, too far in, in our humble opinions. I think I saw something like that. Yeah, Samuel Proctor. I've said on the Facebook poop, uh, the Facebook post that the Wonder Woman it, theme is obnoxious. Well, number one, it's not a theme. Um, I don't. I don't want to talk about it too much because I will dedicate a whole stream to this very topic. Um, no, Melissa. No. So the '66 theme, I think, is a th it's it's a song. It's it's not a musical theme. Um, it, so like Ducktales, I it it's not really. Unless DuckTales, unless the song was musically depicted inside the episode, inside the musical narrative, it's not really, it's, it's a theme song, but it's not a theme. Batman 89 is not a theme, it's a motive. It's da 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 And then Elfman just kind of stacks off, stacks up that, that stuff. Uh, and it's great. It's 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 a motive. I'm not knocking it for being a bad motive. It's a great motive, but it's not a theme. A theme is 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 you know is a complete sentence with a key point, a key feel. Um, but a motive is more like a gesture or like a key word of a sentence. It's 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 an idea, but not a complete sentence. That's right. They, they deserve to be dunked on because that that stuff is just I, I, it's it's awful. I'm not saying it's it's not I'm not saying the music itself is awful, but as far as a character or or even a film it just doesn't work. Just doesn't work. Netter is laughing at me. I think it has something to do with the, the, how I answered her question. <laughs> Uh, I do like the Snyder um, uh, Snyder Woman theme, but it's a warrior theme. It'd fit a warrior like Red Sonia or uh, Boudica, but not uh, Ordicha. I don't know how to pronounce that name, but not Wonder Woman. Actually, it doesn't really, that music doesn't even fit a character. It doesn't even fit an individual. It fits an idea. It could fit in any scene, like a, a stampede of horsemen charging into a village or something. And then my son, uh, Melissa, has a, a has a, a birthday coming up for her son, May the 30th. Well, happy birthday. I, I think I'll be around to, to say happy birthday earlier. Uh, maybe you should do a stream on the DCEU musical scores or not your show sound. I might. I might. I, I, can, talk, I, could, I could talk about different things like uh, the, the Danny Elfman theme and all that. I will be talking about Hans Zimmer. There's a lot to talk about uh, with him. A lot of misconceptions about Hans Zimmer. <clears throat> oh, it's 11.08, it's past 11. All right, well, we'll wrap it up soon. Uh, yeah. Oh, the end of DuckTales, they do have a version of that song that lacks the lyrics and has an orchest orchestral lead in its place. But yeah, it's a theme song, though. Yeah, you could do an instrumental version of a theme song. I'm, I'm actually talking about a very specific theme that works in the 
narrative of the story inside the episode. So like for instance, He-Man, his his uh his theme is at the start of the show. It's at the end of the show with the credits, but it works in the all it also works in the narrative of the episode. Oops. Daniel Craig says, but Junkie XL made one of my most favorite progressive house tracks ever. You could still be criticized. You can be an amazing artist and still be criticized. What I criticize him for is not knowing how to compose for a character. A character. He composed, like that music could have been for a, like a, a, like a stampede, you know? You know, a stampede of mythical wildebeest. You know, <laughs> that, that's what it sounds like. Doesn't His music doesn't, like at least what I heard, um, doesn't sound like for any individual, it sounds like it, it sounds like music for an event or like a, maybe a kind of race, like a, um, a warrior race, but not, not individualized. I don't mean individualized. It could be a, a clan of people, clan of aliens, clan of animals, but it doesn't, I, I like, I, I see cheetahs running or something or, or hyenas running. It's not, it's not, and it's not, there's no melody. It's just, it's just an effect. It's just an effect. Oh. Oh, uh, Wolf 10 says, Bodica or Budica. Cool. Never heard of her. Uh, professor says, I'm just posting a video tonight. I will game stream tomorrow at 10 p.m. At 10 p.m. Okay, cool. Well, good. It's a great song to have in your head. It's, it's a fantastic song. It's one of my favorites. In fact, I think it's one of the best composed theme theme songs. Uh, so, what about Adventures into Wonderland song? Oh, you mean? That, you mean the one you you posted on the group? That's a song though. That's not that that's not a. It, it doesn't work as a theme unless it's in the narrative. At least this is this is my understanding of how music themes work. There could be a composer out there on on watching the replay saying she's absolutely wrong. But the way I understand um, it to work in film and in opera, uh, it has to it has to work in the 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 narrative. Uh, narrative fabric of the of the story. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, you mean um, what? What's your favorite artist name? What's his name? Ah, I always get the the letters confused. Junkie XL. Um. Yeah. Like. Well, I mean. Yeah. I actually, I think it's like a tri tritone that goes into like a seven, eight pattern. I guess it could work, but it's not even that good of a motive either. It's just, it's not that good. I don't know. All right. Mm. Okay. So actually, Melissa Harris brings up a good point. Pirates of the Car Caribbean theme. And something like that. That's that's always reworked somehow with uh, Jack Sparrow and, and his antics. I've only seen the first film, and I saw that a long time ago. So, But I do remember the... the Pirates of the Caribbean theme. That works as a theme. That totally works as a theme because you hear it inside the story. All right. So I've got like a couple, I, there's, there's one thing I want to do with my music before uh, wrapping it up for the night. Um, so I think I will call it there. So yeah. So of course I have my sound experimentation videos for Thursday. And then I guess, you know what, um, today's the 17th. 
I would have two more. Oh, I, so if I have this class, I'd have two more Monday night streams for two months. Um, but yeah, there's this summer is going to be, we're into summer now. It's going to be pretty, pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll still have Monday night uh, live commentary next, next Monday and the following, maybe, maybe the summer. We don't know. I don't know. No one might enroll. I don't know. Um, but uh, of course we have all our stuff going on throughout the week. Um, with, with Wolf 10, Catholic Bible Geek, Professor Geek, uh, Soundtracks with Birdman, Green Lion Girl. We've got Netters Network on Saturdays and also Big Al as well for their rewatches. Um, but thanks guys for tuning in and always, you know, I would just say keep producing, keep producing and keep pre preserving the art you love and I'll catch you later. Uh, take care.